I like to hold my finger right down over the cutting edge of the um, blade, no matter pretty much whatever I'm working on, so I can feel the relationship between the steel and the stone. I don't hardly have to look at it to do it. The tools are the language through which you speak to your material and they want to speak clearly, you need a sharp tool. Now with the chisel, perhaps I should use a bigger chisel just so it's easier to to see. Yeah. How about this one? Because it's the same as I would do for that, okay? And this is your classic chisel grind. See, it goes flat on the top and angled to meet it from the bottom side there, resulting in a nice straight edge. And having it flat on the one side is important for this particular type of chisel. Some chisels are ground from both sides, top and bottom, and they result in the, the knife edge. What would you use that for? You can use it for most of the same things that you can use this for, where these straight backed ones are good for is cutting like a mortise into the material that you want a nice straight edge or mm -hmm. you know to your interior of your mortise that you're carving. These are a little more versatile because they're ground on both sides like a knife. You can use them um, going this way or that way. You don't have mm -hmm. to have a separate chisel. And that also the the edge is at, a, at an angle is that this one. Um, typical? Yeah, for this is called a skew. If you were cutting his little board, grain is going this way. If you wanted to cut across the grain, a skew cuts it nice because it slices like a slashing of a knife kind of thing instead of us uh, pushing straight in with a right. chisel. Right. So that it has its purpose there. And I have a great big one that I like to use for planing down or planishing a, a surface like on my uh, carving that I'm working on now, even working on the face, I'm using this great big skew to smooth up the face and take the, the gouge marks out and things like that. On the chisel, back to the chisel, <laughs> I'm gonna do most of the work on the beveled side. The earlier part of the, what I was just doing, I was doing the back into the heel of the grind, which is, as I said, good for maintaining your angle. Try to use the whole stone too, um, so it doesn't get too dished in one spot. I think that was just this one corner. <laughs> it's always just this one corner. All right, I have the feather edge here. On the chisel, like I said, most of the grinding goes happens on the um, beveled side, of course. And when you do end up with your feather, you tease it back onto the other side, but you lay the chisel as just about flat on your stone as you can and use the fine stone to do it with. That did it. On this one, I'm going to jump right onto this fine one. But if you did use the medium, you would only use the medium on the beveled side? On the beveled side, yeah. Because yeah. why scratch up the side that you're trying to maintain flatness, you know? Right, right. I mean, it'd be different if you are dealing with a nick. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes huh, God. <laughs> that's funny. Isn't it? So I have chased that feather enough on this, and uh, again with the you put most of your effort in the bevel here, and then when you're dropping the flat side, keep it flat to the flat down. And that just prevents you from getting a sort of rolled, rounded 
cutting that, yeah. edge. Yeah. On some things, you you want a slightly rounded cutting edge going into like a knife and stuff. It's what makes a flint knife stronger is having that kind of a rounded edge. Although this is sharper, this is stronger. So your edge yeah. will last longer. And that has got a nice edge. But that's pretty good and sharp.